Hi, I'm Rick Conlow. I'm glad you're here. I'm CEO and co-founder of WCW Partners and also co-author with my business partner Doug Watsaba of the superstar leadership model, Good Boss, Bad Boss, Which One Are You? I want to talk to you today about the state of the art for improving the customer's experience. And I'll share with you a few thoughts related to the problem in business today related to that, the challenge of overcoming that problem, the opportunity, and the solution. Before I do that, let me just give you a brief overview of WCW Partners. We've been in business 16 years. We work globally. We're a full-service consulting and training organization, and we help companies improve their, uh, improve their employee morale and engagement, enhance customer loyalty, increase sales growth, and, of course, grow the bottom-line profits. And you'll see on the screen here just an example of some of the customers that we've worked with worldwide. So let's talk about this. And I've got four key questions for you to kind of set the tone for this. And you think about these questions as I go through this presentation. How good does your company want to be related to the customer experience? Do your company executives really believe that improved service can help drive sales growth? And the operative word there is really believe. What are the top two challenges you see to your organization significantly improving your customer experience? And what kind of customer experience initiative do you have in place today? And is it helping improve sales growth? Because if it isn't, you need to change that or enhance it. So what's the state of the art? Let's talk about the problem, first of all. If you look at the American Customer Satisfaction Index, the national CSI average is 75.9. Now think about that. Back in the 80s, Tom Peters and uh, Bob Waterman wrote the book In Search of Excellence. And what it began is really in, it initiated, initiated and renewed the quality effort that Deming had talked about prior to that, along with Duran and Crosby. And we had a revolution in terms of improvement, and total quality management, and customer service improvement, and a variety of efforts to try to be able to do that. Yet here we are, over 30 year, years later, and we've got a 75.9. And you know what that average is? If you were to take a test, at best that's a C. And compare that to then the sales growth in the U.S. and Canada. It's been averaging about 1.5 to 2% at best in terms of sales growth since 2009. And Europe is negative and the world economy is stagnant. In other words, uh, we're not getting any better there. We've got some real issues. If you look at retail, for example, you'll see a slide here that shows that customer engagement from people in retail, I'm only using this as, as an example, uh, is really poor. The overall sales rating in terms of helping customers buy is 48.2%. And then if you look at this study here, what you'll see, the service score is 75.3. The sales score is 59%. Again, it's similar to what I just showed you. Both of those numbers are pitifully poor. And think of the effort that we put into uh, employees and customer promotions, and yet it isn't making the impact that we want it to have. But that's not true for all companies, which we'll talk about. So what's the challenge? Sam Walton of Walmart said this when he was running the company. There is only one boss, the customer, and he can fire everybody in the company from the chairman on down simply by spending his money elsewhere. And when you think about the world economy that we have, we're not competing just with the people next door, but people across the oceans. When you think about that, how true it is. It was true back in the 80s and 90s. It's even truer today. Yet, it seems like some companies aren't paying attention because if you remember the ratings I just shared with you, at best we're a C in terms of our results. John Cotter, famous change management strategy said, a strategist, said this, 75% of change initiatives fail today. So it's not like companies haven't tried to do something. Certainly they have over the last 30 year period of time, but most of them have failed because we're not much better. We're not much better. And I think one of the reasons that happens is this concept called the Joe Harry window, and you'll see it on the screen. Without going into all the theoretical background behind it, let me just share this. As many times the experience of the leadership in the companies becomes their worst enemy because they get these blind spots that they don't know, but it's known to others. 
And these blind spots say the customers or other people in other industries see them where their service has fallen short and what they can do better, and they aren't doing anything about it. They think they got it good because they got tunnel vision on their own strategic plan. And then there's the other piece, the hidden potential. You know, we believe that industry can be significantly better than 75.9 or whatever the standard of measurement is, that the service can improve significantly. But it's not known to the companies. It's not known to the individuals in those organizations so they don't tap that potential. See, what they often need is an outside partner to help them break through in both those areas. The other reason is in our research, we identified... 10 reasons companies fail to improve their customer experience. And I'll list all of them, and you'll see them on the screen, but I'll only comment on a few of them. One is ignorance is bliss. And I want to mention about that is that they think they're doing a good job, but they spend more time on the merchandising, on the profitability, on the product, on the buildings, on technology, and they don't invest in the people who get the job done with the customers every day. So their ignorance seems to be their best experience. Vision without vitality, the panacea approach, frontline fanatics. In other words, it's the frontline's fault. One major airline said this to me when I complained to them. Oh, yeah, we've got a program going on. It's for our frontline employees. They forgot to look into the detail of my letter, which said it was a management issue. They think do it all, have it all. So they try to get it all done at once and get it done in three months. It just doesn't work that way. Or uh, another one is I am a rock, I am an island. In other words, I don't need help. We know our business. No one else is going to help us. We had a company like that in retail. And through the tough recession in 2008, 2009, they lost $2 billion in sales. Uh, we came in to try to help them. They're trying to use their technology to improve, which I'll come to. And they didn't need any outside help on the uh, people side. And where are they now? They're losing 8%. Drive-by training, in other words, they do just a little bit, just in time. Secretist technology, most companies fall into that category today. Get the biggest and greatest and the latest related technology. It'll change how we do business. Yes, we need to do that. However, it isn't the only answer, and we need to focus on people too. The tool chest dilemma and the perils of execution. If you're a leader in an organization, you know and have seen many times where poor execution has derailed the best of strategies. And that happens time and time again, and it goes back to that Cotter quote that I mentioned to you before. So there's more depth in each of these, but these are 10 reasons why companies fail to improve their customer experience today. So the opportunity. Well, according to research, there's money on the table. If a company can move from a 75 CSI to the 80 CSI, they start gaining sales growth immediately. Here are the research that backs that up. Harvard Business Review, TARP research, Profit Impact Market Strategy Database, Bain and Company, a CSI study, all of those five different areas essentially says this. Employee engagement, improve that. It leads to better customer engagement, which will help your bottom line. It'll improve sales growth. Wow. When you think about that, who wouldn't want that? And you can take any of these numbers, take your annual sales, what your customer satisfaction rating is, Compute it related to what these studies say will happen, and you can come up with a bottom line impact. And conservatively, we say most companies can gain 2 to 4% in terms of their sales growth by implementing a more focused people, structured process of improving their customer experience. That's the opportunity. That's the bottom line to it. Our own clients, we have found that those at the highest customer satisfaction survey ratings have 10 to 20% same store sales increases and lead their markets and profits. Wow. So I said conservatively with 2 to 4%, you can actually do significantly better than that. So what's the solution? We've also done research on the best service providers out there. And on the screen, you'll see Amazon.com, JetBlue, Apple, Nordstrom's. You'll see Disney, and you'll see the Wegmans grocery store chain. All these companies have CSI ratings that are in that 80-plus category uh, compared to that number that I shared with you earlier. And they all have consistent growth and profitability uh, that most companies would die for. So we dug in and said, what are they doing that's different than everybody else? And we found five cultural habits of customer-driven companies. And briefly, they are. Number one, great customer experience is a way of doing business. It's not a program. It's not something you get all excited about today and then move to another priority tomorrow. 
It's how we do business. I remember one company uh, was all excited about their new customer service program. And the CEO got out and he got on TV and told the ad and said, here's we are, we are the new so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, they had advertisements all about it. Well, one thing, they forgot to tell their employees. They didn't provide the resources and the training and so forth. And sales actually went backwards. It wasn't a way of doing business. They made it a marketing program. First, you got to fix it. Then you can tell other people, quite frankly. Second cultural habit is employee satisfaction and loyalty leads to customer satisfaction and loyalty. That's the bottom line. The two are interconnected. Cultural habit number three, ongoing and learning and development is integrated into the fabric of the organization. You just don't train because uh, you're coming out with a new product. I had one company tell me that in New York the other day. We got a new product coming out. We're going to do employee training. That's how we do it when we need it. Uh -uh. The best companies make it an ongoing process. For heaven's sakes, Disney has people come to them for training. And the best companies are like that. Number four, the customer experience is researched measured and the data applied. In fact, they just don't look at overall satisfaction numbers. They dig in and look at numbers that are more important to the customer. For example, Apple, what they do is they measure how often their employees in the store ask their customers if they need other products and services, knowing that they really will need them to be able to help them. And then cultural habit number five, continuous improvement is expected and the speed of gain is second to none. Shoot, at Amazon, they say that if it takes more than two pizzas to feed a team, it's too many people working together. In other words, the point is you want to have small groups of people empowered to be able to get results, make decisions with customers, and make things happen. Now, you don't learn these cultural habits overnight, but what we've learned is companies can transform who they are by adapting these habits to their industry, their kind of model of business to be more successful. And that's what's missing. If you were to sum all this up, you could say this. Um, I show you on the screen the picture of Olympic athletes, and I don't know if you had an opportunity to watch some of those uh, while the London Olympics are in process, but tremendous stories of those who participated and those who won the medals. And here's one of the things I noticed, that when these athletes are being interviewed, they talked about their coaches, people who helped them succeed. And I thought, here are the best of the best in the world, and what do they have? They have coaches. They have someone helping them be more successful. Wow! You know what? Most companies today need a coach to help them succeed and to break through. Because the bottom line of these cultural habits comes down to this. Leadership engagement leads to employee engagement, leads to customer engagement. The key is how you do that. And that's where companies tend to fall. And the time and effort they put into making that happen. Wow! What I want to share with you briefly in summary is some of the results that we've achieved is we've worked with organizations to be able to do that. The first company uh, listed there in retail competing against the biggest company in the world, 8% same store sales. They'd be the darling of Wall Street if it was a private company. The second one there, five years in a row of record results, 75% improvement in results the first year as they focused on sales and customer retention. And this was business to existing customers. And by the way, they were an 85-year-old company, number one in their industry. Yes, one of the best got better. A medical manufacturer with a sales and service focused program, 30% improvement in sales uh, uh, over a period of time in a down market. A retail company, another one, those results were just incredible as they found a new way of serving their customers, not just waiting for them to come to you, but prioritizing and going to them, gained 48 to 73 percent. And last but not least, we've helped our companies get 33 quality awards, including Ford's President's Award and J.D. Power Award. The point I'm saying is these cultural habits that I'm talking about and the concept of leadership engagement customer engagement and employee engagement going together, you can stand on those results. I hope you enjoyed this summary of the state of the art and customer experience in business today. If we can be of service to you, feel free to call us. Take care.